Who is this heart? Hi, sweetheart. Happy birthday. thought I didn't want you to be who I wanted you to be necessarily. I wanted you to be your true self. I wanted you to have chances to do things I didn't get to do, of course. I don't think any parent wishes otherwise. I wanted you to be able to actualize some potential that I never got a chance to to see things I never will. I'm really sorry. I mean, I know it's not my fault. Let me get rid of this ridiculous skull. It's not my fault. None of this is my fault. I still have some of the gray carpet. Um. You were wanted. And you were loved. I never got to touch you or see you. And I never really got to bury you. I mean... I had a little memorial service for you, and I did all of it myself. I even baked a loaf of bread in the shape of a woman's body, and gave communion and said, this is my body broken for you. This I do, and this all I do in remembrance of you. But they really did get those things up there, didn't they? You have a name, and I make sure everybody hears your name, so I'm going to say your name now. You are Viridiana Osorio Riverstone, and you are my daughter. I took you up to Chaco Canyon. The um, the order of service that I printed for your memorial. Oh, I'm supposed to get a kit. I don't remember how. I have to hurry because I don't know how long until they wake up and they're burning this today. P-L-E-K-I-T. So, those little mementos, I put them up there in Chaco Canyon, in the four corners. So the old ones could keep an eye on you. I know it's all just an intellectual exercise. I feel kind of funny about this because... They told me the reason they wouldn't give you to me so that I could bury you was that you were just pretty much a pathology specimen that they burned in the incinerators. And for weeks, months, I had horrible nightmares that your only experience of life outside my body was in an incinerator as a pathology specimen, not as my daughter. You would have had brown skin, almost olive-complected skin. Your daddy had the most beautiful color, and you know he was almost pure Maya? Yeah, he was. 
are down by the oceans, the tropical oceans of Mexico. He was a good looking guy. He was funny too. It wasn't a relationship that was going to be destined to last forever. But he was smart. And you would have been smart. Two smart parents? Heck yeah. Probably would have been pretty good looking too. Wow, by now you'd have been in college. Or something. You're an adult. Except that you don't exist. exist. You never did. That's been hard for me to wrap my head around for almost 20 years now, you know that? But I can't even talk to you. After you died, I felt like such a failure, you know? I could see women around me that could breed like rabbits and didn't want the children they had, and you were such a wanted child, you were my only chance to parent. I wanted you so much. It took a lot of courage for me to bear it. I was afraid. For many years, I was afraid that I would hurt a child the way I had been hurt. The way I had been hurt. I didn't trust myself to be able to bear it. It was a big deal for me to choose to have you. But it was too late, I guess. I don't know. Lots of pregnancies and miscarriages, you know. But you were a miscarriage. And that's another thing. My pregnancy with you was killing me. So here I was mothering for the first time that I know of. It's maybe possible I've had other miscarriages, that I have had miscarriages. You were not a miscarriage. But mothering for the first time, I was told not to let anything harm or touch you, to be very careful to maintain the pregnancy. And then they started doing tests and exams on you, and it was all I could do to keep from kicking the doctors. Because they told me to be careful, and there they were. You know. And I had to make a choice. Three times. Because of the medical staff's incompetence, I had to make the choice three times. To voluntarily submit to procedures that would remove you from my body and end your chance for life. I almost died with you in me. But then it suddenly occurred to me that I might not die. I mean, it was really painful and I was willing to go through that. But it occurred to me, I might not die, I might end up a vegetable and not be able to control anything else about my life. And I couldn't take that risk, so that's why I went in. But after you were gone from my body, that protective mother in me that I had never experienced before, She wanted to protect you, and she wanted revenge against whoever had hurt you. And of course, who had hurt you? I had. And I wanted to end my life. And I came really close to it. Really close. something happened. I don't know where I got the strength or the 
the sobriety of mind, the rational thought, to suddenly realize that nobody would ever know anything about you except that I had killed myself because of my baby. Your life needed to mean a lot more than that. Your short little eight week life. And I let kids from the war zone, the hood, hang out in my house. And everywhere I've lived since, I've been the safe place for the kids, you know? I taught them astronomy and cooking and auto mechanics and how to be kind to animals and how to respect themselves and how to build things and grow things and create things and cook things and everything I couldn't do with you I did with those kids. And now I'm playing Minecraft because there's not really many kids around and I'm kind of scared of this town and I really don't want to interact with anybody here if I can help it. Your name is Viri Diana Osorio Riverstone and you are my only daughter. Well, I don't really have anything formal that I wanted to do here and it's just going to be burned anyway, and I thought there were flowers. There's a pink, no, oxide daisy, white, clean. <laughs> the animals are breaking. Well, right escape didn't help. I'm going to try to do this. <laughs> wow. You can put a lot on those things, can't you? Okay, now just for a test dummy, because... Really other work. Where did I get these? Oh god. I'm nervous and self conscious because I'm recording so people will see it. Just for a test dummy. Let's use one of these. I don't mean your dummy. You're just poppy. <coughs> let's see what happens. Now where do you come in? Is this the coming in place? No. Alright, I'm a little lost. No, I believe in people's right to choose whether they parent or not. I do. And I chose to parent you, but I could not because my body could not sustain you. And you could not withstand my body. Okay, there's the front. So I was going the right way. Okay, the way I escaped the city. And isn't that a metaphor? I mean, the way I escaped the temple to the city. Oh God, somebody's here. I bet they fixed it, because... Did they? Yeah, they... told... Adam. <laughs> this thing is really important. The people this represents have been through, um... 
real grief and heartbreak. Yeah, you can plant flowers out here. And this is a, um, this is a memorial about forgiveness for the troubles. I think I can't unplant this. I know a little bit about troubles. I don't know about war. can't put it there, right? Okay, can I put it here? You lost your name. That's okay. Nope. So there you are, honey. And a place of forgiveness and a place of children. And a place of art, and a place of enormous grief and pain and loss. I've had a lot more positive influence on a lot more people than I would have had without you. I wish I could have looked into your eyes. I wish I could have touched you. I wish I could have held you. I wish I could have buried you. And I wish I could have had a place to visit. We never had that and we never will. So it's appropriate that you're here in this virtual digital space that's going to burn down in a few hours. Because you're not really here. And neither am I. Mm-hmm. 